So now that we've learned tons of terminology for sets, we're going to start drawing um, some visual representation of sets. And these are called Venn diagrams. And Venn diagrams are used um, in lots of uh, the different um, subjects we might teach. So we actually would see Venn diagrams probably pop up in our science curriculum or maybe our English whenever we might be comparing and contrasting things. So you could take two stories and compare them. Or you could think about different animals. So you could compare maybe a butterfly to a bird. So they would have things in common like wings, but they would have things not in common like how they're born and their life cycles. Or you can compare butterflies to frogs because they would have similar life cycles, but one can fly and the other one cannot. So these compare and contrast. So you might teach these um, probably in lots of different grade levels that you would see over and over again, but it might not technically be in a math classroom. So let's go over some of these Venn diagrams. There are a couple more terminologies to go over. The first is an intersection. So A intersection B. That's the upside down U. This is a Venn diagram down here below. I'm going to have two sets and the intersection is what they have in common. So anything that would be in both possible sets. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but there's kind of that light shaded outline. That's a box. Technically, this is the universe. So you can have things that don't exist in either A or B that are just floating around in the universe. And we'll look at some examples uh, toward the end of this where we've got some of that going on. We also have the union. That's going to be a regular U. I think about it, it makes sense that U is union. So intersection would be the one that's not shaped like the U, the, the one that's upside down. If I have my sets A and B, it would be all of A and all of B. So all of them together. What I tell my little story that goes with this is if you think about two people moving in together, maybe they're forming a union. We call, you know, um, marriage a union. So you've got those two people forming this union. They're bringing all of their stuff together. The union would be all of person A's stuff and all of person B's stuff. The intersection would be anything that overlapped. You got these two people moving in together. They probably both have a microwave because pretty much everybody has a microwave. That would be the intersection. What um, if it's the item that both A and B have? So they end up with the duplicates of those microwaves. That would be the intersection. And our last one we have here is the set difference. Now, in unions and intersections, the order doesn't matter. Um, we could have up here the intersection of B and A and the union of B and A, but the set difference, the order does matter. We need to make sure they're re reading left from right. I am, have the privilege of being on the iPad, so it's going to make it a little bit easier to show this one, so don't color in until I'm done. This set difference means, says we're going to think about all of A, and then we're going to take away anything that's also in that B circle. So notice that's my B circle, so I had to take away everything that was in A. Let me show you again. There's all of A, and I took away what was also in B. So I took away that intersection. So what I'm left with is the stuff that's only in A. So I'm left with the items that only A brought to the union um, and didn't include anything with B. All right, we've got a couple examples here. I've got some drawings down below. We'll start with examples of ones that are just sets like we saw before in the last section. We'll start with that set difference. So the set difference of A and C. So I'm going to start with A. I'm going to take away anything that's also in C. So C just has these two elements in it. So I'm left with C, D, E. Make sure to include brackets on these. So make sure I have brackets. If you can't do them, you can just do a squiggle, but please don't do parentheses. Let me do one more. I am going to do C down here. A 
intersect B. Remember, this is the intersection. So it has to be things that exist in both A and B. So if look at A and B, C's in both of them, D's in both of them, and E's in both of them. So that would also be C, D, E. All right, why don't you pause and give the rest of these B and D a shot. And let's see how you did. So I'm gonna start with, oh, this was a tricky one. Maybe I shouldn't have given you this one. I didn't even realize it, but this was a tricky one. If you had trouble with that one, that's all right. If you had trouble with it and you haven't tried D, go ahead and pause again and give D a shot. I realized that B is kind of tricky now. So if you haven't, B is tricky. But if you haven't given D a shot, go ahead and hit pause again and give D a shot. All right, let's look at C. I'm going to start with C. I'm going to take away anything that also shows up in A. So the letter A and the letter B show up. There's nothing left in C, so it's just the empty set. So you can write it one of two ways. You can have either one of those symbols. Just choose one. Don't write them both out. For D here, that was the union. So I need to think about all of them. But remember, we do not repeat letters. We don't want to write them more than one time. That was from the last section. So I want everything that was in A, and then I'm also going to put everything that was in B. I've already got a C and a D, oops, and an E. And then I'm going to have that F. So everything that was in A, and then also anything that was in B. Do not repeat the letters, so don't write them more than once. 